Make-A-Wish recipients and workers, what were some wishes you had to say no to? Make-A-Wish wish grantor here, and I have to say it is the ultimate sadness when we have to stop the process because a non-custodial parent won't sign the paperwork. It's happened far too often. Usually the wishes we had to say no to were from the kids' family members. There was always some uncle, grandma, cousin, sibling, or parent who wanted to hijack the kid's wish. A classmate of mine, now passed, got a meet and greet with Sammy Sosa. The understanding from the Make-A-Wish people was that Sammy would sign autographs and sit with the family for a while. Now, this kid was all about Sammy. He had his jerseys, loved Sammy's little leaps after home runs, and if I recall correctly, even was big into Pepsi because of Sammy too. When the day came, Sammy showed up late. He didn't respond when the family greeted him. It was described as a sullen silence. Signed a glove and then walked away. My classmates started crying once it was clear Sammy was not going to come back. Right when the parents were about to leave, another baseball player named Corey Patterson saw my classmate, came up, signed everything they had, and talked and joked around with the family for over a half hour. Corey became my classmate's favorite player that day, and I think he lived perhaps a year after that moment. At his funeral, my classmate's picture with Corey was one of the prominent pictures. That moment and day truly, truly meant the world to him. He was around 10 to 11, if I recall correctly. To this day, I'm unsure if someone from Make-A-Wish found Corey or if the moment was as spontaneous as it was described to me, but no matter what, Corey will always have a special place in my heart because of that story. I, of course, was not there, and I'm not a primary source for Sammy's interactions with my classmate, but I know and trust the family. One thing that a couple of Anons have pointed out that I think is worth mentioning is that it seems unlikely that Make-A-Wish would organize a meet and greet with Sammy Sosa, gently suggesting I was misremembering the context. The Anons argued that it's more likely their meet and greet would be with the Cubs team as a whole, and that this changes the context of Sammy's actions if the meet and greet wasn't directly with him. What I do remember is that this story really rocked our tight-knit community, but made us that much more appreciative of Corey Patterson. My little brother has had two heart transplants so far, and will probably get another one before it's all said and done. His wish was to go to Nintendo. Well, Nintendo Japan doesn't grant wishes, but Nintendo of America does. He stayed in Seattle for a few days and had a day-long tour of Nintendo. Unfortunately, Reggie wasn't in the office that day, but the Treehouse staff led him around all day. This was right before the Switch came out, so we got to play Breath of the Wild before anyone. They gave him a sweet goodie bag and let him go on a shopping spree in the employee store. I received a wish when I was 15. At the time, I was madly in love with Harry Styles and of course wanted to use my wish to meet him and spend the day with him. After telling the wish coordinator this, she broke the news to me that if I were to meet him, it will be a year from then with about 15 other kids for a very brief moment, a hello and a photo. Upon hearing that disappointing news, I changed my wish and instead went to Australia for 10 days with my family and swam in the Great Barrier Reef. Just for some background, both my sister and I are pretty dang sick, and so we had the rare occasion where we both got wishes. My family suggested that we just do one, but Make-A-Wish was adamant that we each got our own. My sister's Make-A-Wish was to meet Taylor Swift. We flew to Nebraska for two days, got in the same meet and greet line as people who won radio contests, took a picture with Taylor Swift, and that was that. I, on the other hand, asked to meet Christopher Nolan. He had never been requested for a wish, so we were flown to LA where we got a tour of the Warner Brothers lot and then had a private lunch with Nolan and Emma Thomas, his wife. We hung out for two hours where they finally left because they had some film-related thing to do. We found out later that he'd only agreed to an hour, but during the lunch insisted that he stayed longer. It was quite interesting how we both had celebrity wishes and they both turned out so differently. I asked for a shotgun because I was into clay shooting. They said no. Went for a rally driving day. They picked my family and I up in a limo. Drove us two hours to the place, and then I had the whole place to myself and lots of time behind the wheel. It was great. They paid for pro pictures and a meal after for my family and my godparents' family. Even just gave me some spending money. I had a great time. Ten years later, still alive. And hopefully have that shotgun? This isn't my personal story, but one of my uncle who passed away shortly after I was born. He loved the Terminator so much that he wanted nothing more than to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. Due to having a busy schedule, Arnold's agent had to deny him of his wish a couple of times, was filming for the second Terminator. My uncle was so determined to meet Arnold that he then changed his wish to meeting Maria Shriver, Arnold's wife. Because of his determination, he was allowed on set of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. He got to meet Arnold, Maria, and Arnold's stunt double. My mom still has the pictures and it makes my heart sore. Make-A-Wish is fantastic and I'm so glad my uncle got to live out his dream. My condition prevented international travel, so even though my top wishes were to go to Japan or to the UK to meet JK Rowling, those were denied. I ended up doing a shopping spree at Mall of America, which sounds kind of lame, but I grew up poor and had a lot of fun being able to just buy things for myself without worrying. First thing I bought was a new pair of glasses, since my old ones were scratched to crap and too weak anyway. When I was in college, I had a good friend named John. We were both in automotive 8 hours a day for 2 years. 
One day, we grabbed sushi on lunch, and he casually mentioned at 12 years old, current age 20, he was a recipient of Make-A-Wish. He asked for sushi and just sushi. You could see his eyes light up just telling the story. They set him up with a private lunch at a local sushi bar where he had the entire selection of sushi rolls laid out in front of him with each and every possible condiment, roll, and side. Not an expensive or grandeur request, but Make-A-Wish went above and beyond. I've been the recipient, and later on after my health improved, I volunteered as a wish coordinator. My original wish was to attend the Oscars. That got denied by the Academy as they do not grant wishes. I wound up going to the People's Choice Awards as a VIP. Make-A-Wish flew my family to LA for a week, all expenses paid. They got us a limo for the show, paid for my dress, hair, and makeup, we walked the red carpet, and were seated very close to the stage. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The generosity of the volunteers is remarkable. They even had someone greet us at the airport on arrival. It was extremely important to me that my brother and sister were included in my wish because my illness had robbed them of part of their childhoods. I am forever indebted to everyone who made my wish possible. When I turned 18, I decided to volunteer as a wish coordinator to give back to an organization that did so much for me. I met with wish kids and their families. We would always arrive with a gift for all of the children of the family based on a little survey they filled out. We'd talk with the child and help define their wish. It's important to determine the child's true wish and make sure that it isn't influenced by parents. The most common wish is to go to Disney. Celebrity meet and greets are the ones that often can be turned down. First, because it's undefined what a meet and greet is. It could be the child literally waving at someone and no one wants that. And second, because not all celebrities grant wishes or can schedule time to meet wish kids. The coolest wish I worked on was a shopping spree for a boy who was confined to his room. He got 7,000 to go buy video games, TVs, a tricked out lazy boy, etc. for the ultimate gaming setup. I worked with a guy who was a make-a-wish kid and he said he wished for a puppy and was denied. It makes sense that they're not going to give live animals to a little kid. Well, it's between that and the shotgun. When I was a baby, until I was five, I had cancer and got some wishes. My first wish was for a computer. I only wanted a computer because it came with a mouse. Yes, I thought it came with a real mouse. So, obviously it was rejected because you can't have pets when you basically live in a hospital and my family is broke anyway, so they couldn't give us a pet. I ended up getting some dope googly eye glasses and an epic trip to Disney World. It was the only family vacation we ever got to go on. I didn't know the kid at all, but he died from cancer his senior year of high school when I was a sophomore. We had an assembly for him. His name was Tyler. His wish was a gift to his best friend. Tyler went to a computer store with his friend and asked him to show him the best computer there. Then Tyler bought the best computer there for his friend using Make-A-Wish donation money, only to die a little later. Such a selfless guy. Tyler met Imagine Dragons three years before his death and they became friends. Imagine Dragons dedicated its time to Tyler. Whenever I hear that song, I think of this. It chokes me up every time. I worked for Make-A-Wish. Junior genie, as I like to say. We had to say no to wishes all the time. Either the person the kid wanted to meet didn't grant wishes, the place they wanted to go to didn't grant wishes, their wish was ridiculously expensive or prohibitive, their doctor didn't sign off on the wish as it wasn't a good idea for their health, and so on. For the most part, our volunteers were pretty good at helping kids zero in on that perfect wish. I've helped coordinate some wishes that I was surprised to see were approved. Usually it's trips to far distances with a lot of stops and long stays. It's one thing to go to Japan. It's another to go to Japan for two weeks. It's another to go to Japan for two weeks and go to 10 different attractions. Not all of them give us free tickets. Many don't even give discounts. Most kids had cookie cutter wishes. Disney World, Paris, Meet the President, etc. Those were my bread and butter. I hate to call them cookie cutter because I know it's such a precious memory for the kid and their family. Working there was a precious memory for me too. And I enjoyed coordinating everyone's trips. Unusual, frequent, high medical needs, lots of family, what have you. It was such an amazing thing to be a part of. I knew a friend who had cancer and overcame it, and he talked about Make-A-Wish. If it's not accepted, you apparently get a first-class trip to Disney World most people can't afford. He said he went to Disney World because he wanted to beat a skater that was in Europe on some tour. I was really lucky to have my Make-A-Wish granted, and I just want to say they really go above and beyond. My mom has always talked about going to Hawaii, and we knew it was pretty unrealistic for a family of four. I was pretty young when I made my wish, so I didn't even know all that Hawaii had to offer, but I chose to go there for my wish. They put us up in a penthouse suite on Waikiki Beach, and I've never experienced anything more special in my life. Everything and everyone there wanted to make sure my family had an unforgettable time, and we sure did. We were able to forget about the cancer for a little while and feel like a normal family again. Thank you so much to Make-A-Wish and all that contribute. I have experience with Make-A-Wish in the last year due to my son's condition. This was a question I asked, and the response I was given was, they will do anything they can within reason. One kid wanted a swimming pool in his backyard, and they did that. 
Because of how the process goes with Make-A-Wish, they ask the kid a lot of questions to determine what the child wants and to ensure there isn't any influence from the parents. My wife and I sat with my son while they asked him a lot of questions over about a one hour period to determine what he wanted to do. They asked my wife and I to sit there silently while he answered honestly. We are going to go to Legoland and meet Darth Vader sometime in 2019. I was a Make-A-Wish kid around 20 years ago. I was five. I asked to be turned into a dinosaur. They said no. Zero out of 10, worst organization, they hate kids, boo. Couple years ago, I went to Disney at Orlando and there was a little boy running around wearing a shirt that said, I'm a Make-A-Wish kid. My friend had to comfort me when I cried because the toddler's mom and aunt told the pretzel vendor his Make-A-Wish was originally, make mommy happy. I got genuinely emotional reading that and I'm so glad I'm not crying on mic right now. <laughs> the moment I met with the workers, I asked to go to the moon, but was turned down. Tried to compromise with space in general, Ended up going to Italy. Not as cool. One of my nieces is a Make-A-Wish recipient. She had stage 4 rhabdomyosarcoma. They flew her, her sisters, her dad, and her grandma to Disney World and they had the time of their lives. She's 6 years cancer free and still talks about how grateful she was for that trip. She's just turned 14 and her younger sister talks about how it was her only plane ride ever. That organization is amazing and will forever have all of our support. I would like to add that the Ronald McDonald House Charities is another amazing organization that put my family up for housing in Manhattan during her treatment, over two years in the hospital at a minimal cost. Before that, we were driving three hours each way every time she needed chemo. Also, shout out to the Sloan Kettering Oncology Ward for taking care of her and making her feel like a kid while she was going through treatment. I think we all know by now the comedian who had a kid request he show up to the child's funeral dressed as a giant member. Kid made it through his illness. The comedian is named Russell Howard, and I gotta say, laughter is the best medicine. My son chose a Disney cruise. He didn't even hesitate in his pick. Probably because we were on day one of a Disney cruise we had been planning for over a year when he took a small tumble in our stateroom and wound up breaking his femur. Because, unbeknownst to us, his leg was filled with Ewing sarcoma. This trip he had been looking forward to for so long was destroyed before it even really started. So when it was wish time, he asked for a redo of our cruise. We waited until he had been off of chemo for a couple of months, and we had a wonderful time. We even added days on at Disney World, from our DVC timeshare, after the cruise. Both the Make-A-Wish folks and the Disney Cruise employees told my son to make sure he wore his Make-A-Wish shirt to the parks when we were there. He did one of the days, and even though that wasn't part of his wish, the Disney cast members all treated him great. It was so nice to see him have such a wonderful trip after a ruined dream vacation and a year of non-stop hospital stays. By the way, he is doing great now. He hit two years off chemo this past September. I got a wish as a kid, then survived. The biggest, best thing I could think of was to go to Chuck E. Cheese's. I have no idea why I was fixated on that. To the credit of some good peeps, to Chuck E. Cheese's I went. I couldn't be around other people, so they opened it up at night. People deep cleaned it, sterilizing each ball in the ball pit. There was dedication there. Then someone who was cleared medically worked it. Don't remember most of it, was pretty young, mostly just remember the bits I found exciting, but that dang rat casino still makes me smile whenever I see one. Moral of the story, never bet against Make-A-Wish when dealing with logistics. Every ball in pit. Kid I know got cancer in elementary school. He was always into history and US presidents, so we asked to meet him. They flew his whole family out to DC to meet George W. Bush. Also, he actually spent more time with them than was allotted in his daily planner according to the dad. The kid beat cancer and is still doing okay. Not a recipient, but worked at a hard rock cafe. A wish kid's wish was to see Paul McCartney live, so they came in to eat dinner before his concert down the road from the restaurant. We sat him next to some signed Beatles guitars and sheets of lyrics and the such. As an avid Beatles fan myself, I was able to serve them. I sat and talked with that six-year-old about the Beatles for a good hour, played all the Beatles songs, and had their music videos playing on the TVs throughout the restaurant. It was super humbling with how excited this kid was to go see Paul and just be able to be outside the hospital for the night. And also super heartbreaking seeing his dad's face the whole dinner. I'd never seen such pain and I think about him frequently. I'm from Minnesota. When I had leukemia 30 years ago, I remember my wish was to go to the Grand Canyon. My parents straight up vetoed me. And instead the family, two sisters, went to Disney World and other Orlando attractions through the Give Kids the World program. It was the right decision, but still. Was it the right decision? Because it sounds to me like Disney World is full of more Make-A-Wish kids than actual people. Also, the Make-A-Wish Foundation should have let you have your wish in spite of your parents. That's the whole reason they had those conversations with you. I got offered a Make-A-Wish when I was 5 years old because I had leukemia. My parents declined their offer because my survival rate was very, very likely, and they wanted another kid who was less likely to survive have it. 
After I was cured, they took me and my twin brother to Disneyland to celebrate using their own money. My parents are wonderful people. In this thread, Wish Denied went to Disney. My son was a Make-A-Wish recipient. He wanted to go to Europe. They were planning it and his piece of crap birth father wouldn't allow my kids to get passports. Great father, huh? Son had like 36% chance of survival from brain cancer and he said no passports. Anyways, his second wish was an RV trip to the Badlands, Yellowstone, and the Rockies. They got us the biggest bus type, think it's A-class, RV they could get. Set everything up for us, gave us itineraries, and off we went. It's such an incredible organization, and luckily, my son had a blast after finally having the okay to go. He's also in remission and doing well, thank God. Make-A-Wish is incredible. Fun fact, the amount of kids that wish to go to Disney World is so large that Disney built its own resort for them called Give Kids the World, where only families from Make-A-Wish can stay. They have special buses to transport them, doctors are always on staff, and there's special games and activities at the resort for kids who can't make it to the park that day. I adore Make-A-Wish and everything it's done for kids. It helped send my friend to the Bahamas when she was sick, and she said it was one of the best experiences of her life. It was mentioned several times below, but Give Kids the World was actually made by Henry Landworth, a Holocaust survivor. My daughter was granted a wish. She really wanted to meet Taylor Swift and see her in concert, but Taylor was not touring at the time, so we, her parents, kiboshed that wish. She was not healthy enough to enjoy a long concert, and I didn't want her to postpone her wish since we weren't sure if or how long she might live. In the end, she chose to go to the Sea World Resort in Florida and swim with the dolphins. She ended up being scared to death of them and refused to even go in the water. Make-A-Wish sent us to Universal while we were there too, and she had fun. That was six years ago, and she is now in remission. We took her to a Taylor Swift concert this last summer, and I think she enjoyed it way more than she would have six years ago. So when I was 15, I got to Make-A-Wish. My uncle really pushed to ask to meet Tiger Woods and play golf with him. I wasn't into that. Neither were my cervical tumors. I was getting better and I knew I was going to be okay. I told the wish peeps that I wanted to bow out, but they were pushy. Right in front of my mom, I said I wanted to hit a blunt with Snoop Dogg and wouldn't accept any other wish. That got shut down. I'm fine and 34 now. We did the standard Disney World trip. My son only had months to live and we had a small window when he was well enough to go. Bruce was five, so he didn't really have any big or creative ideas. He'd only been to Disney World once for a single day and my husband wasn't able to come. He told the wish grantees that he wanted to show daddy the giant castle and ride roller coasters with no lines. Even though it seemed like the cookie cutter wish, my son's Make-A-Wish experience was truly amazing. I still cry thinking about how much that trio meant to him and our entire family. My son was treated like absolute royalty during the entire trip. Volunteers we met at Give Kids the World, the resort where we stayed, really connected with him, and even flew in from states away when he was on hospice and for his funeral. I love reading about the amazing and unique experiences that others request. I will definitely be following this post. We became so close with our wish granters. Those people are truly angels in this earth. I am so thankful to everyone involved to make a wish, donors, volunteers, everyone. This organization made such a huge impact on our lives, and we made memories that our family will cherish forever. This doesn't answer your question, but I had cancer when I was three and apparently have been approached by Make-A-Wish. Unfortunately, I was only three and too young to actually make a reasonable wish, so the wish fell to my parents. They asked for furniture. FURNITURE! I'm told that I was very sarcastic, even at a young age. When they told me I could wish for whatever I wanted, I thought I could think of something impossible. A big brick house, so the big bad wolf can't blow it down. Make-A-Wish people said that they ran out of bricks granting their last wish. They handed me a catalog of playhouses to choose from. I defiantly flipped immediately to the back and poked one at random before probably returning to my Studio Ghibli movie. And that is the story of how Make-A-Wish built me a two-story playhouse with heating, air, and electricity. I'm so glad they ran out of bricks. My mom became a wish granter shortly after my son went on his Make-A-Wish trip. She's done many wishes and has even been wish granter of the year for her region a couple times. The only one that was a flat-out no was one recipient who asked for a sexual favor. Other than that, Wishes for new cars are always a no, but Make-A-Wish will basically pimp out a car already owned by the recipient. Other than that, she's been a wish granter for everything from trips to shopping sprees to even being on an episode of Fixer Upper where she was wish granter for two boys who wanted an accessible playground in their backyard. I got to have mine granted in 1999 when I was 8. I wanted to see my two favorite baseball players, Mark McGuire and Chipper Jones, play. Make-A-Wish set up everything. Hotel, tickets to the game for my whole family, and even tickets to Six Flags. Before the first game, they brought us down for batting practice, got to meet the whole Braves lineup, didn't meet a single player from the Cardinals, and we were told McGuire specifically declined the request. Braves won that game. I feel karma paid off too. 
Braves made it to the World Series, Chipper won MVP, and is now a Hall of Famer. McGuire would later get marked for using steroids, will not make the Hall of Fame, and Cardinals finished under 500. My mom worked for Make-A-Wish. A little kid wanted to build a treehouse in his front yard. Make-A-Wish denied him for being too hard to coordinate. Make-A-Wish must not have approached the right people. I've been in construction for a long time. I could get about 30 qualified people together on short notice to build a treehouse for a terminally ill kid in a weekend or so. Shout out to Ron Swanson's old man on Reddit for that comment. Username checks out.